Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Landon with LMR.com. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the installation procedure for our SVE sway bar relocation kit designed for the Coyote Swap 1979 to 1993 Fox Body Mustang. All right, so first things first, uh, if you've ran across this video and you have not seen our review video on this particular kit, please go watch that video first. Check out the description for more information. Prior to the installation of this kit into your Fox Mustang, depending on where you're at in your build, you wanna to be towards the end because you want as much weight on the car as possible. As far as tools are concerned, you're gonna need a good selection of tools. You're gonna to need a spot weld drill bit so you can drill out all the spot welds that retain the factory Fox Way bar bracket to the frame rail because you gotta get that out of your way. You also may need a grinder so you can ensure that the underside of the frame rail is completely smooth so your sway bar mount has a nice even surface. A 7 16 drill bit to drill the two holes for the bolts and the stud plate. Other than that, the help from a friend is strongly recommended. That way they can help you hold the other end of the sway bar while you're mocking up your sway bar mounts. So the car of choice today for our sway bar relocation kit is one of our mock-up cars here in the shop. So we're gonna get right into it. All right, to get started, safely support the car via a lift or get it as high as you can if you're working off of jack stands. Depending on the current status of your swap, go ahead and remove the front wheels. At this time, you'll also want to remove the factory Fox sway bar and the end links. The entire bracket needs to be removed from the frame rail. Go ahead and remove the factory Fox sway bar brackets by drilling out the spot welds with an appropriate spot weld drill bit. And when it is, ensure that the underside of the frame rail is completely flat. You may have to grind this smooth with a grinder. For the sake of our situation, this is our R&D car, so our sway bar brackets were already removed prior to the install. Use a rust preventative paint and cover any uncoated metal surfaces. Go ahead and do the same for the other bracket. Whenever both of the brackets are removed, you can begin the mock-up of the sway bar. Go ahead and separate the two sections of the provided sway bar mounts. Thoroughly lubricate the inside of the bushing and any part of the bushing that will make contact with another surface with the correct grease. Install the bushing in the correct orientation and then slide the U-shaped bracket onto the bushing. Then position the other section of the mount into place. Do this for the other side of the sway bar. Here's where you're going to need help from a friend. Position the sway bar into place and verify that the mounts are positioned underneath the frame rail. If needed, you can use a floor or a pole jack to help hold the bar in place. The objective here is to get the sway bar as far back as you can, all while considering the ear of the sway bar in relation to the strut body, accessory drive components, and of course the oil filter. Whenever it's time to mark the frame rail with the mount in the correct position, I would mark as many locations as you can for multiple points of reference. This includes the bracket and the bolt holes. To check for symmetry, measure the distance from the center of the large frontward hole in the frame rail to any mark that you made. Check this measurement with the other side and adjust accordingly. Before drilling these two holes, verify that the center to center distance of these markings is 74 millimeters or 2.91 inches and that the holes are centered within the frame rail. Center punch these marked areas and drill each hole with a 7 16 drill bit. With the holes drilled, take a zip tie, wire, or something equivalent and tape it to the top of the stud plate. Feed one of the stud plates through the large opening near the front of the frame rail. Work the stud plate towards the drilled holes and feed the studs through the openings. Thread on one of the provided nuts so you can use this as leverage to install one of the push on retainers. Go ahead and fully seat one of the retainers on the stud. Remove the nut and then install another retainer. If desired, firmly pull the zip tie or equivalent fishing tool, whatever it was that you used, away from the stud plate and discard. With the help from your friend, position the sway bar mounts into place and install the provided locking nuts. The torque spec for these nuts is 35 to 40 pound feet. Now that the sway bar is secured to the frame rail, we need to install the end links. Hold the sway bar so that the ear of the bar is parallel with the ground at ride height. Measure the distance from the top of the control arm where the hole for the end link is to the underside of the sway bar ear. You'll need to take into account the height of the two bushings that are situated on top of the control arm and underneath the ear of the sway bar. The way I would recommend that you do this is to purchase a new set of sway bar end links for a 94 to 04 Mustang so you'll get all the new pieces associated with the end link assembly. The only item that you would have to potentially source is a shorter bolt that works with the provided lock nut in the end link kit. You would also need to shorten the provided sleeve to accommodate the change in height. All the bushings, washers, and the lock nut can be used without modification. Once all this is assembled, reinstall the front wheels and torque the lug nuts to spec. A drive-on lift would be ideal for these next few steps. 
Be sure and verify that the ear of the sway bar does not make contact with the strut body whenever the wheel is turned lock to lock. To do this, the weight of the car needs to be on all four wheels or the suspension needs to be loaded. Go ahead and check over your work and you're all finished. All right, so wrapping everything up here, fellas, man, I'm telling you, this is a really, really good kit. If you are considering this kit and you're at the point in your build to where you're considering painting the engine bay, now is the time uh, to make this commitment. Since you have to remove the factory Fox body sway bar brackets to install this kit, get them out of the way, get the car to the painter, that way you can paint your frame rails, get all that nice and pretty. If you've already painted your car and you're considering this kit, well, you're obviously gonna have to make a few touch-ups, but any good paint and body guy can make that happen for you. Anything you may have seen, products, parts, accessories, check out the video description. If you like the video and you appreciate our commitment to solution-based kits for the Fox Mustang, smash that like button. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more great Fox body content and turn on notifications. That way you're notified every time we release something new. And until the next video, you guys know what to do for all things Fox body Mustang. Keep it right here with the real enthusiasts, LMR.com.